Hey, what's up guys? Tony Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the Samsung C34 J79. Now, as you look at this monitor, you might um, recall that the Samsung CF791 looks almost identical and you wouldn't be mistaken, it has pretty much the exact same specs except for the fact that the new monitor, which I'm showcasing over here, has Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now, what's the big deal about Thunderbolt 3? Well, if you have a uh, modern day laptop, modern day uh, motherboard, which that's not the case with me, um, and you were to connect it up um, to the monitor, you'd be able to have faster transfer, faster data transfer, a better, um, uh, a, a better transfer between the whole of the ecosystem. In other words, you can have your laptop connected to your monitor and then your monitor transferring out all to your peripherals or what have you. And it just means that it is a modern day monitor. It's not using an older standard um, of connector types. Now, without further ado, let's go into the review. I'll go into um, what this monitor is and obviously use it as a standalone review over the um, previous uh, generation uh, monitor. If you're interested about the old monitor and want to know more about it, uh, my review is in link in description below, so make sure you check that out. And also I'll link down Thunderbolt 3 standards and what it all means and why it is important, especially for people who own something like this um, in their lives. Now that's my girlfriend's laptop is using an old um, um, <laughs> MacBook Air, I almost forgot the name of it, uh, but that uses the older Thunderbolt uh, version. And yes, don't worry if you have an older device, like an older Thunderbolt uh, version, it is backwards compatible, so you can still uh, benefit from that connection, but you won't benefit from the speed, but that will be uh, to do with your laptop rather than the actual monitor. So what are the specs of this monitor? Well, it's pretty simple. It's got the exact same specs as the old one. It's a 34 inch curve, that's 1500R curvature. Uh, a resolution of 3440 times 1440p. It has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, a 4 milliseconds quoted G to G uh, response time. It runs a VA panel at a quoted refresh rate of 100 hertz. It, the old version also, if I'm not mistaken, had an AMD FreeSync, which I think this one also um, might do as well. Yes, it does. I just couldn't remember. Now, I can't test the AMD FreeSync capabilities because I own a um, NVIDIA GTX 1080. Um, so just bear that in mind uh, that I can't test that AMD uh, function of it. Now, in terms of the build quality and design goes, it's very much identical to the old version. It has a circular base, it has um, height adjustment, tilt adjustment, and of course you can pivot it if you so wish, but it hasn't got the um, nice circular stand which allows you to pivot it. It can't be rotated for obvious reason given the size of the monitor. It's a massive monitor as well. However, the three side borderless design means that it fits um, in a desk. So for example, my IKEA Freddy desk over here, it fits perfectly under it, and I wouldn't have any problems um, in a smaller desk situations. Um, other than that, you've got a joystick control at the bottom right uh, back of the monitor. It's very handy, very easy to um, enter the OSD. Now I'll just show you this now in terms of the OSD itself. Um, it's very um, intuitive and very easy to use. If you click on the button and go into menu and you flick up, you'll be able to see the menu. Now the menu, the OSD is very easy to understand. It's, it's pretty much um, uh, simplistic yet to everything you'd want. You've got the picture modes, uh, brightness, contrast, color modes, which I've got it on normal right now. Uh, you've got a upscale, which means that it just makes it look sharper. I wouldn't suggest that if I were, if, if it was me. Response time or faster, so I'll get into it in just a bit. You've even got an inbuilt calibration report, which is pretty cool. So uh, back in uh, the older monitors, you used to have a calibration report printed out for you. Now you've got it directly on the monitor, which is nice to see. You've got PIP and PPB mode, um, the OSD that you can customize customize uh, the system so you've got display version 1.2 and you can put that down if you wanted to you can enable and disable free sync so obviously it's not going to be working for me and then you've got some information about the panel and what uh, refresh rate it's running at so the OSD is uh, pretty comprehensive you've got everything you'd need to know uh, via it and um, I love the fact you've got inbuilt calibration report it's pretty cool uh, especially for those who are going to be uh, photo and video editing now I'm just going to take the camera off its tripod, uh, tripod even tripod. Um, that's because I'm talking, I'm thinking about Apple stuff um, with their iMacs and stuff. So at the back, you can see you've got two USB 3.0 ports um, with a um, um, 3.5 millimeter jack. You've got a Display Port input, HDMI input. You've got the um, uh, power cable as well, which is pretty thick. And then you've got the two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one of which uh, supports 15 watts and the other one's 85 watts of power. That's huge. 
huge because that means you can, um, well, supposedly fast charge your phones. Now, in terms of fast charge, um, I think it's around 1.5 to 2.5 amps of uh, power, which is great, which is more than the normal uh, 0.5 USB standard that you'd get on most monitors. Now, most importantly, let's talk about the image. How has the image changed? How is the image uh, quality? Well, I can tell you straight away that the image quality hasn't changed a bit. It's the exact same panel. It's a quantum dot technology, as far as I'm aware, uh, and it's a VA panel. Now, the monitor looks beautiful. It's got, obviously, a near 3,000 to 1 contrast ratio. I found it's about 2,300 to 1 uh, contrast ratio using a uh, calibrator. Um, and the, the, in terms of brightness uniformity, no problems there either, very much like the old panel. And um, just the overall uh, color reproduction and how the panel looks, it looks stunning. The, the colors really pop out. You've got a beautiful um, um, uh, sort of um, accuracy. So for example, in this image in the Taj Mahal, you've got a beautiful white color over here. And I know the Taj Mahal can change color, don't get me wrong, but you've got nice um, uh, green uh, greens over here on the side and the water reflection everything is really accurate. However, it's not as um, um, eye-popping as some other uh, monitors I've seen. So for example, an IPS, a class-leading IPS panel, it's not as, um, uh, the, the image doesn't pop as much. Still, you've got fantastic colors and I would have no problems if you're a photo or video editor using this um, monitor. Now, in terms of my uh, uh, calibration report, I found it to have an average LTE of around 1.5, which in all honesty is fantastic. Anything under two is um, ideally perfect from a, um, a monitor. That was calibrated the sRGB standard. It hits pretty much near 100% of the sRGB um, color gamut as well. Um, and it's around 80% on the Adobe and DCI-P3 uh, color gamuts as well, which means that you can um, edit um, in those color spaces. Um, so if I'm talking gibberish right now, this will not apply to you. But if you're in the industry and looking to edit in those colors, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So now in terms of the overall it, 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 thoughts of the panel, just in terms of my own user experience. As I said, no problems whatsoever. Viewing angles are fantastic. You've got no tail off on the um, the edges which some uh, curved monitors um, face. And also the curved um, uh, nature of it, the 1500 R curvature means that you feel a little bit more immersed in terms of what you're doing. Even if it's movie watching, uh, looking at Excel documents or uh, playing games. Which leads me perfectly onto playing games. Now this monitor is 100 hertz refresh rate with a four milliseconds G2G response time. And I found the monitor to perform, well, you guessed it, identical to the previous version. It is um, flawless in terms of its operation and it works flawlessly. Um, I know I used flawless twice and hit a bin at the back. But nevertheless, in terms of the monitor, um, I have it on the fastest mode um, in terms of response time. That's the one I would suggest simply because you get absolutely minimal ghosting which occurs. So in other words, if you're playing games which are more visually demanding than Counter-Strike, then you won't notice a lot of purple trail occurring in the background. And more so, um, in terms of the response time monitor, uh, the response time monitor is boosted down with that fastest mode setting uh, enabled. And in this respect, I could use it for, I would say semi-competitive play to, um, to casual play. If I was a competitive gamer, then I wouldn't be using this monitor uh, anyway because I'd be looking for the fastest refresh rate. This monitor is not aimed for gamers anyway, but it has that capability of it due to its 100 hertz refresh rate. In terms of input lag, it could be slightly faster, but it is um, very responsive nevertheless. And as I said, if you're that type of gamer in terms of semi-casual, uh, semi-competitive or a casual gamer, this monitor will absolutely appeal to you. Just bear in mind, it's not 144 hertz, it's not a one millisecond, seconds G to G uh, response time monitor, at least uh, quoted by the manufacturer, and nor is it a monitor that's really aimed at those uh, type of gamers. So in terms of what it's intended for and in terms of its gaming performance, I had no problems with it, even at the fastest settings, which you'd expect a lot of um, inverse ghosting and like purple trail occurring. So imagine this is the image and it's purple trail behind it. Um, it, it performed very, very well. So overall, in terms of gaming, no problems, as long as you bear in mind that this is not going to compete with the class-leading um, gaming monitors out there. So overall, in terms of my uh, overall opinions of the monitor, I think it's a fantastic monitor, and the fact it adds Thunderbolt 3 in terms of its overall um, capabilities is great. Now, if you're gonna use Thunderbolt 3 or not, it's up to you. 
If it was me, I'm not going to ever use Thunderbolt 3 and therefore I would opt for the older model instead, which is slightly cheaper nowadays. This monitor comes in around £800, so it's very expensive and it's exact same price as the launch price of the old monitor. The only thing is the old monitor has since dropped price. So that's the only thing to bear in mind. If you're going to be using Thunderbolt 3, I don't see a better monitor on the market than this monitor that you see in front of you. If however Thunderbolt 3 isn't important to you and you want all the features that I just mentioned, apart from Thunderbolt 3 of course, then get the older Samsung 100Hz curved monitor. So there we go guys, I've been totally dubbed. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe, let me know in the comments below what you think, and more than anything, favorite and share as it always helps the channel grow. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed, take care, and bye bye.